Welcome to the channel. Producing content for over half of a decade. Hold on to your butts. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Reading the Room. You know, conflict is rightfully a critical piece to storylines when it comes to movies. Of course, they aren't always physical, and they aren't always resolved through dialogue. Though rare, some conflicts are never resolved, which is okay for the filmmakers to utilize, if it means their vision is better realized that way, and that it feels natural. It isn't always an exact science how the conflict is presented, but it does need to exist in order to form everything important throughout the movie. This includes relationships, rivalries, and rising stakes to build tension throughout the runtime. Today, I'd like to explore and discuss the lightsaber battles from the Star Wars prequels, break down some of the unique aspects surrounding them, and ultimately explain how important they were not only to engage the audience, but to drive home the story between rivals and enemies that more often than not result in a resolution to complete that story. To begin, we'll obviously be starting with episode 1, The Phantom Menace. The finale to this movie is, well, a mess, as the battle is split up into four different areas, and thus results in abrupt cuts that from time to time happens when the action reaches a heightened intensity. However, somehow the duel between Jedi Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn against Sith Lord Darth Maul is relatively unaffected by interruption from the standpoint of fan engagement. The Duel of Fates is one of my favorites, as it meshes together all aspects I love from a cinematic fight. The emotion you get from Obi-Wan through his facial expressions tells you how he feels in each moment, as well as his eagerness to remove the threat of a Sith Lord and Obi-Wan's emotional state was a clear indicator as to how he was not yet ready to be a Jedi Knight, but remained a Padawan still learning to control his feelings. In a contrast to Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon remains composed throughout the majority of the fight. He even displays his level-headedness when the three duelists are separated by energy walls, as he lowers himself into a meditative state. Maul's demeanor shows a bit of a combination of both Jedi, with rage and heavy aggression while maintaining clarity and control throughout. All of the traits among the three combatants complement each other, and it makes for a tense and high-octane lightsaber battle. In Episode 2, the duel between Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Dooku is short, flashy, and unfortunately did not entertain me in the slightest. The battle felt rushed, with Dooku laying Anakin out with Force Lightning immediately, and it kind of falls apart from there. I'm sad to say that even the best part for me, which is when Anakin has the chance to dual wield lightsabers, is over in a matter of seconds. The lack of emotion in this fight left me with a sense of emptiness, like I might as well be watching robots fight, which actually isn't that bad. But hey, at least we got to see a Yoda assist at the end. Episode 3, which is widely considered to be the best of the prequel trilogy, has a strong final fight between the mentor and student, as Obi-Wan butts heads with Anakin following the betrayal of all betrayals. In almost every way, this conflict excels well beyond the duel in Attack of the Clones, as it should. Being a fight between two former friends adds intensity to an already amazing conclusion to Revenge of the Sith. It is not perfect. There are several moments that feel unnecessarily flashy such as the spinning blades, all of which miss contact. And although I might be nitpicking, it could have done without the chest kick, backflip from Anakin to Obi-Wan, that ends with an Olympic level stuck landing. A broken leg. Some didn't care for the part with the double force push, but in my view that helped the battle, as it illustrated just how even the two Jedi were when it came to their grasp on the force. And the ambient sound in that moment was perfectly placed. The battle wasn't as intense as the finale in The Phantom Menace, but the closing moments between Obi-Wan and Anakin definitely gave my heart a tug. The line delivery wasn't flawless, 
but Obi-Wan's transition from unbridled rage to subdued frustration, and finally succumbing to the depression that he tried to internalize since he watched Anakin's attack on the Jedi Temple. We witnessed the breakdown of a man in a very brief moment that rounded out the downfall between the two Jedi, whose relationship was rocky at best from the start. Well, that's my take from the lightsaber battles in the Star Wars prequel trilogy. What did you think of this episode of Reading the Room? Let me know in the comments. Share this video with friends and family. Don't forget to hit the like button, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.